Good evening and welcome to the public meeting of the Halton District School Board for Wednesday, June the 6th, 2018. I'd like to welcome everyone and remind everyone that this meeting is video voice recorded and live streamed from the hdsb.ca website. I would also like to ask that you turn any devices to silent mode. So we have a, a couple of trustees, actually uh, four trustees that are missing this evening. We have the two student trustees, uh, Trustee Mansour and Trustee Metropolitansky that are away uh, for student reasons, you know, it's busy this time of year for them. And we also are, um, have regrets from Trustee Harvey Hope and Trustee Graves as well. Uh, Superintendent Padra Barrick is also not with us this evening. So before we move forward, uh, this evening we have Trustee Oliver to honor the land. Good evening. Halton as we know it today is rich in history and modern tradition. Zoni and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we have the responsibility to honor and respect the four directions, land, waters, plants, animals, ancestors that walked before us, and all the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We would like to acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation for sharing their traditional territory with us. Thank you very much, Trustee Oliver. Are there any declarations of possible conflict of interest? Seeing none. Uh, before I put the agenda on the table, um, I need to make a, an adjustment. We will not be having the OPSPA uh, award presentation this evening. It will be happening at some point in the future, hopefully the next board meeting. Okay, so could I have a motion, please, uh, to approve the agenda? as amended. Thank you, Trustee Gray, seconded by Trustee Oliver. Um, is there any discussion at all? Seeing none. All those in favor. That passes unanimously, thank you very much. Okay, now we're up to the Inspire Awards. One of my favorite things that happens every month. Everyone in the Halton District School Board community can nominate or be nominated. Families, neighbors, related organizations, staff, students, and school volunteers. The Inspire Award is given to an individual or group that is formally or informally associated with the Halton District School Board who support our students and their achievements through exemplary, caring, initiative, innovation, and creativity. Award recipients choose where they would like to receive their award, and this evening we have three presentations. So first I'll call up Trustee Kelly Amos, who will be presenting the first award. And then I'd like to invite Jackie Clark up to the front. Jackie is a teacher with Udenawe Public School. She creates a welcoming and inclusive classroom environment for students, parents, and other staff members. Jackie understands the varying needs of the different learners in her classroom and is always applying a hands-on approach for students. She ensures lessons are fun and engaging for all students and always has a positive attitude and approach to learning. Jackie is a wonderful role model and inspiration for all students and staff. Congratulations.
Trustee Amos will be staying because uh, we, our next Inspire Award will also be presented by her. Uh, would Teresa Baxter please come forward? Teresa is a teacher at, oh, now we public school. As a teacher of life skills classes at the school, Teresa makes it a commitment to ensure every student receives the time and attention they need to succeed. In a class of students with varying levels of learning needs, Teresa provides all students with the resources they require to develop independence. Through highly structured and step-by-step -step programs, Teresa has helped her students become more comfortable with daily activities and with communicating. Teresa's enthusiasm, organization, and patience is an inspiration to her students and EA team. Congratulations. Last but not least for the evening, I'd like to call up Trustee Rochelle Pappen. And I'd like to call up Corey Trod, please. Corey is a resource teacher at Lester B. Pearson High School. He is an outstanding support for all students and works closely with special education needs students, ensuring their transition from elementary to secondary school is smooth. He believes in, advocates for, and encourages his students and includes parents in their students' learning. Corey is always positive and has his students' best interests at heart. His caring and supportive approach helps students build confidence to reach their goals. Congratulations. The following Inspire Award winners have chosen to receive their awards at their place of work. Peter Milovanovic, Principal at John William Boych. Rod Thate, oh sorry, wait. Um, I just wanna make sure. Thanks. Yes, Rod Waite, a teacher at Milton District High School. Rod Afaro, a volunteer with Silver Creek Public School and Georgetown District High School. Ruth Ann Courage, volunteer with West Oak. And that's everybody for this month. So congratulations to them all until the next meeting because we will be having everybody from May at the next meeting. Excellent, thank you very much. So 
Moving on. We have no delegations this evening, but we do have one presentation. Number 323, Truth and Reconciliation Annual Report. Superintendent Etoff. Um, and then we have... Uh, Uh, and uh, Principal Marshall and uh, IPL Tammy Hartwick. Welcome. Oh, and just a note that this presentation is the sister presentation to the report that is on page 149. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, yes, I would like to acknowledge that uh, um, System Principal Marshall is is in the audience, and uh, uh, certainly will will acknowledge her uh, her support of this work um, uh, following the presentation. But uh, as you can see from the report um, in front of you, extend, extensive work continues to take place throughout the system uh, to ensure that we honor the motions of the Board of the Trustees, which are based upon the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's calls to action. Over the past 12 months, this work has been illustrative of the high degree of commitment to the implementation of learning based upon the calls to action across all levels of the Halton District School Board. Over the summer months, we'll be revising uh, the HDSB equity policy to update language and include the central tenets of what the trustees approved through their original motion back on uh, June, and, uh, June 2015. Uh, the commitment of the Halton District School Board's response to the work of the National Truth and Reconciliation Commission regarding Indian residential schools in Canada will be integrated into our equity policy statement and thereby continue to be framed as integral to the equity work undertaken across our board. At this time, I'd like to introduce Tammy Hardwick, uh, Instructional Program Leader, K-12 for First Nation, Métis and Inuit Education. Uh, so that she can share some highlights of the work that's been accomplished over the past 12 months. Thank you, Superintendent Itoff. Ani um, Bojo, Tammy Hardwick Dishnakas, Adawa Anishinaabe, Shishigwaning Manodo Minising Makodode. So uh, once again, thank you for having me here. Uh, the past 12 months has seen a wide variety of learning opportunities as our communities engage deeply in learning that reflects Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action. I would like to highlight three areas of work in particular that speak to the high level of investment across Halton District School Board. First, a considerable focus for staff learning this year was the release of Phase 1 of the Ministry of Education Curriculum Enhancements Grades 4 to 6 Social Studies, Grades 7 and 8 History, and Grade 10 Canadian History. These curriculum enhancements were developed in order to redress the legacy of residential schools and advance the process of reconciliation in Canada. Over the past year, representative educators from Halton Elementary and Secondary Schools participated in professional development focused on deepening their knowledge of Indigenous perspectives, cultures, histories and contemporary realities in order to more effectively implement the curriculum enhancements beginning in September 2018. Phase two and three of the curriculum enhancements will include social studies and history curriculum for grades one to three, as well as secondary social sciences, humanities and Canada and world studies courses. These ongoing enhancements will explicitly embed the requirements of the calls to action and reflect indigenous histories and perspectives. A second area of focus I'd like to highlight from this year was the Indigenous Arts Collaborative in Inquiry Series. This prof professional development was designed and implemented in partnership with the Indigenous Education Leads from Dufferin Peel District School Board, uh, Dufferin Catholic, sorry, Halton Catholic District School Board, exploring areas such as cultural appropriation, secondary visual arts educators for the course Expression, Expressing First Nations, Métis and Inuit Cultures, Grade 9, work closely with Indigenous artists over the year-long inquiry to examine and inform their classroom programs. Secondary arts teachers were also invited to learn from the artists and educator learning through a symposium and culminating day of sharing. 
Finally, as a community partner, Halton District School Board continues to work with local organizations to build understanding and awareness of Indigenous histories and perspectives. As an example, collaborating with the Oakville Community Foundation through the TRC partnership, learning opportunities were provided for students and community members. These opportunities have included the vital conversation series for community members with topics including missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls and Treaty Recognition Week. The final community event will be sc the screening and panel discussion of the film Indian Horse on June 21st, National Indigenous Peoples Day. Additionally, Grade 5 students in Oakville were able to increase their knowledge of the richness of Indigenous culture and heritage in the community through the Indigenous Guided Walking Tour on the Moccasin Trails. As Justice Murray Sinclair has stated, achieving reconciliation is like climbing a mountain. We must proceed a step at a time. It will not always be easy. There will be storms. There will be obstacles. <clears throat> but we cannot allow ourselves to be daunted by the task because our goal is just and it is also necessary. It is clear that the momentum up the mountain and the desire to respond to the calls to action has continued this year across all levels of Halton District School Board. Miigwech for the opportunity to share these highlights of the report with you tonight. And just as a wrap up in, in closing, I would like to take this opportunity because uh, in past years, unfortunately, I haven't um, I've been able to have Tammy here at the table with us. Uh, so certainly wanted to uh, take this opportunity to thank her for her leadership in this in this critical work uh, across the system and also acknowledge um, our stage fright uh, principal, assistant principal, Mary Marshall, um, uh, for her for her leadership as well. Uh, we're fortunate to have many partners in this work and appreciate the support we've received from all levels of the organization, of course, starting with our, our Board of Trustees. And at this point, we'd be happy to receive any questions that you may have. Trustee Amos. Thank you. I'd just like to say miigwech to both of you and to everyone else involved. I believe that our board is a leader in this and that um, it is being embraced um, through the whole system and including uh, this at our board. And we are all learning together. And I think it is so important. I have been to many schools and been involved in some of their activities. And I just think that this is part of the learning that we should all be doing because this is all about what Canada is all about. And we need to make sure that all students know about all facets of Canada, not just the ones they thought we should know. So I'm learning and I think it's impor important that we everyone learn. And so I just like to say miigwech for all the hard work that you and everyone else who's involved is doing it. Thank you, miigwech. Trustee Gray. Thank you, through the chair, to Tammy. Uh, thank you very much for your report uh, tonight and also to Superintendent Ito for the, uh, the fulsome report that we received in our package. I wonder, uh, Tammy, um, the report that you've uh, shared with us tonight, would you be able to uh, uh, share it electronically with us? Because I think it's a very nice summary, uh, very fulsomely of all of the activities that have happened to date and, uh, and so very inspiring. So uh, we would really appreciate having a copy of that. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Trustee Pappen. Thank you. Through the chair uh, to Superintendent Etoff, um, Ms. Hardwick, and uh, Principal Marshall, I just wanted to thank you for all your work you've done on this. I think it's great that there's so much involvement from the school community. Um, I, I do have one question, though. I, I know we are trying to read the acknowledgement at all our board meetings. Uh, and I, I've been to some events where it has been read, but I noticed in some events it's not being read. So I'm not sure how we can go about getting that done. Um, but I think that would be a good idea for, for people that are attending different events by the Halton District School Board. Uh, my other um, comment and question is regarding the calls to action. Um, and I was wondering, I know that in your report, the calls to action are related to education. But since the board has done such a great job of having the honoring the land as part of our, our, our board meeting, I think it would be nice if we acknowledged one call to action 
each mm -hmm. meeting or once a month. I think that would be a good way of getting it out there as well, letting people know what the calls to action are. Um, you know, because not everybody knows them or is, is aware of what they are, what they mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. actually entail. So I don't know if that's Absolutely. something we can consider. But thank you again. Yeah, thank you. Trust, no, sorry, Vice Chair Al Harrison. Thank you very much. Through you, Madam Chair, I just want to express my uh, deep gratitude for the work that to pull together the report, but all of the people that have been involved and just the breadth and depth of the work that's taking place across um, our system. I didn't imagine when that motion came forward, it's a couple of years ago now, how the implementation would work. And I feel like it's truly one of the best things that I've been uh, involved in, and I want to thank you for that. Um, I think one of the last sections in the report talk about uh, flags, and I just wondered if you would be able to uh, let us know where that's at. And for people who weren't at the committee of the whole meeting, that was certainly when we were uh, in discussions and uh, Knowledge Keeper Paquette, um, that was one of the requests that he had made that the system give consideration to the flag. So I just wondered about that. Um, I can I can speak to that piece, um, and Tammy can can fill in for any parts that I, that I'm missing. Uh, as an update, uh, we actually had um, had a request earlier in the year and and, and brought a report uh, around flags, um, and, and continue to do work around those pieces um, in cooperation with our with our many different partners. Uh, where we're I guess where we're at in terms of uh, current state is we have ordered um, uh, flags of uh, Mississaugas of the new credit for uh, each one of our school sites and they're coming hopefully any day now hopefully in time for June 21st um, one of our challenges is uh, unlike the pride flag or, or, or some other flags uh, where it is our belief that we can fly both on, on the same flagpole um, the one piece uh, that we are aware of is that you cannot fly the flags of sovereign nations on the same pole and um, Mississaugas of the new credit are are a sovereign nation. So, um, so that so we won't see on June twenty first uh, the flags flying at our school sites. We'll see it flying here at the board office where we have have the two poles. Uh, we, uh, our direction to schools is is to have it up um, in in places if they happen to have in interior flag poles like some schools do. I know Hayden does, for example. Um, uh, for those that don't, uh, to uh, it to be placed um, in um, in a spot of significance within the school, um, in some matter of form. Um, and in terms of going forward, we'd like to certainly see that that isn't just something that's done on June twenty first, but that is something that um, has a place of significance in our schools all all year round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Thank you very much for your presentation this evening. Uh, I, the, I am so proud of the work that has happened over the past year. And I, though I know that uh, there's a lot that we still, of course, need to do, mm -hmm. uh, I think the community outreach and working with our community partners um, is also incredibly important. And thank you so much for all you do. Thank you. So we are now up to our consent agenda items. Uh, do any consent agenda items, uh, consent agenda items, require discussion at all? I'm not seeing anything. Okay. Just give it. Okay. Um, so I'm going to put the motion on the floor. So, oh, that's Trustee Oliver. Uh, thank you. Through you, Chair, I have a question about uh, one of the order papers. Yeah. So I'll put the motion on the floor and then we'll discuss it, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. So be it resolved that the Halton District School Board approve the consent agenda action items and receive the information items for June 6, 2018. Uh, mo moved by uh, Trustee Daniele. That's no, seconded by Trustee Collard. <laughs> Okay, and uh, you can go ahead with your question. 
Thank you. Um, I'd like to get an update on motion M150071 uh, that deals with um, H, um, the HTST uh, c conducting a study around uh, bell time, changes in bell time. That's page eight in Super, our package. Superintendent German. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I was able to contact Karen Lacroix and to get an update with respect to this motion. So she has indicated that uh, the, the bell time review is uh, going to span a number of years. Last year, um, Oakville was reviewed. This year, there's a review of Halton Hills. Next year will be Milton and lastly, Burlington, once the PAR changes are fully implemented. And as a result of the work, as an example of what was done last year in Oakville, there was um, a reduction or the number of routes that were reduced um, were eight large buses, two mini buses, and one wheelchair accessible vehicle. So the work is ongoing and uh, based on discussion at the board of directors meeting, uh, she indicated that the most efficient way is to do it area by area. Trustee Amos. Thank you. I was part of those discussions and I believe Oakville was only a partial study and they actually need to go back to Oakville to do a, a, um, another review because it was only one area. So um, I'm hoping that it doesn't stop after the PAR because um, I had requested that Oakville be sooner than later. So. Okay, seeing no one else on the speaker's list. Uh, all in favor of approving the consent agenda items. <clears throat> and that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, we are now up to our ratification action items. Vice Chair L. Harrison, do we have any business from private session that requires approval? Yes, Madam Chair, we have one motion that I'm going to call up here. My apologies. And I'm going to read this motion in its entirety, I understand. Here we go. Be it resolved that the Halton District School Board accept the tender from Starfleet Construction in the amount of $900,144 as contained in tender number RFT 18-70 for the construction and renovation of a child care and capital renewal improvements at Brant Hills Public School in Burlington, Ontario, subject to final ministry confirmation of the funding. Be it resolved that the Halton District School Board approve a budget of $1,091,381, including HST, for the construction of a child care and capital renewal improvements at Brant Hills Public School. This project is to be financed as follows. School's first child care capital retrofit funding of $771,381, as allocated by the Ministry in December 2017, pending final approval to proceed. Renewal funding of $20,000 and school condition improvement funding of $300,000 and I so move. And I would like to second that motion if that's possible. Is there any discussion at all? Seeing none. All in favor. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. So we have three action items for this evening. The first is number 2.1, Audit Committee. Superintendent Veerman, report 18082 on page 29 of your package. And I'm going to read the recommendation. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Jean. Uh, I'll, I'll read it first and then, okay. 
Be it resolved that the Halton District School Board approve the audit plan attached as Appendix A for the fiscal year ending August 31st, 2018, prepared by the board's external auditors, Deloitte LLP. Be it resolved that the Halton District School Board approve the 2018-2019 Regional Internal Audit Plan, which includes audits of special education, scope to be determined, and continuing education, and follow-up reviews of the entity-level assessment, information technology, backup disaster recovery, and information technology vulnerability and security assessment be approved by the Board of Trustees. Um, moved by... Trustee Gray, seconded by Trustee Daniele. I'd like to speak to this, uh, Trustee Gray. Thank you very much. Well, as you said, uh, Chair, these are the recommendations from the Audit Committee, the first one being uh, from the External Auditors Deloitte and the second one being from the Regional Internal Audit uh, Team. And uh, I think that uh, the Audit uh, Committee was very, very pleased with the um, with the reports as delivered by both of these groups and uh, wished to recommend uh, them to the uh, Board of Trustees. I would note that in the um, REAT, there was a change that happened in the Audit Committee where we uh, decided to take the audit of enrollment uh, and, and, and step it aside to have rather an audit of special education. Reason for that being that the special education audit had been deferred from um, uh, I think of the previous year due to the special education uh, review that was uh, underway. And so uh, overall, uh, again, I would um, strongly support this, uh, this report as it comes to you from the audit committee and uh, with the uh, blessings of everyone on that audit committee. Thank you. Thank you. We have two speakers on the list, Trustee Collard. Thank you. I would like to repeat my concern regarding um, the special education audit because the scope has not yet been determined. I would like uh, SEAC to be informed of the scope when it is determined and I would like it to be brought to the board so that we may uh, have the opportunity to comment on it and uh, perhaps tweak it if required um, so that we can ensure the privacy of our students uh, throughout the process. Thank you. Thank you. There's no more speakers on the list. So we will move to voting. All those in favor. Um, that passes unanimously, but I understand Director Miller would like to say something. Yeah, I should have thought of this at the time. I'm wondering, we've, we've recorded um, Trustee Collard's uh, comments in the, in the notes, and we have every intention of, of following those, but I'm wondering if it should have been a motion. I think it probably should have been. Let's make it a motion. Sure. Okay, do we have, uh, so just, can you just clarify exactly what you, your motion would like to be? That the scope of the special education audit be um, brought to SEAC for their information and presented to the Board of Trustees for decision um, when, it, when the scope has been determined. Do we have a seconder for that? Trustee Reynolds? And is, uh, let me see, is there any further discussion on that? Trustee L. Harrison. Yes, thank you. I just want to ask Trustee Collard um, your intention for SEAC. Is it you said for information or do you mean for input or? Um, well, SEAC can always advise, but they can't change the scope, they can advise on it, so it would be presented for their information and, and they can give feedback, but um, it's the Board of Trustees that would determine whether or not the scope was uh, suitable. Through you, Chair Grabentz, to uh, Vice Chair Al Harrison, uh, I am pretty sure the intent was to take it to SEAC anyway. I think this is better, formalizes it. Um, 
I think we talked about that earlier as well uh, with Superintendent Zonnefeld and with the REAT uh, auditor. So. Okay, so seeing no more speakers, uh, Ms. Sure. I take that off. Which one is it? The where am I looking? Yours? Probably. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Here, just unplug it. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, so the motion is be it resolved that the Halton District School Board direct the scope of the special educational internal audit be presented to SEAC for information and return to the board for approval. Yeah. All in favor. That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, next on the list, uh, we have number uh, 422, Aldershot Capital Renewal Work. Associate Director Bogue, report 18085 on page 49 of your package. And I will read that recommendation to put it on the floor. Be it resolved that the board approve $1,475,000 from 2018 to 2019 capital renewal funds to update facilities at Aldershot High School to deliver the iSTEM regional program. Moved by Trustee Reynolds, seconded by Trustee Pappin. Um, is there any discussion at all on this? Actually, why don't you start, David? Thanks, Madam Chair. Just a reminder for trustees that the iSTEM program is to start a year from this September, and so this request, though it's not for additional funds, these are funds that come out of our um, capital renewal dollars that we get. It's for a prioritization and uh, allocation of these funds so that we can get to work on um, ensuring the building is up and running for September 2019. So I, I'd be happy to answer any questions. And there were lots of different folks involved or who are involved in this project that I'll probably farm the questions out if they're too hard for me. Okay, Trustee Gray. Thank you, through the chair. Just a quick question under the facility upgrades. I see in number one, there's air conditioning for manufacturing and the hub. Um, just a quick question uh, con from a, uh, a consistency point of view. Is there air conditioning in manufacturing areas of all secondary schools? Or is this something different? Uh, thanks for that question, Trustee Gray. I'm going to look to Superintendent Blackwell around the hub concept. I think that's the critical piece here. Manufacturing shops, it would be hit and miss, and, and in many, there would not be air conditioning. Uh, through, th through the chair to, super, or to Trustee Gray. Um, actually, at uh, Nelson, the addition that's going on to Nelson, the manufacturing uh, area will have air conditioning. Uh, existing spaces that are manufacturing spaces already are not air conditioned. So it is, as, as Superintendent Bogue, or I'm doing well today. As Associate Director Bogue uh, mentioned, it's hit and miss. Uh, the hub space is something that's not in any of our schools. It's something that we are creating. And, and if you recall from a few weeks ago, uh, we did talk about opportunities to have uh, communities come into that space as well. And we want to make sure that uh, uh, the space is there that, that's open and uh, inviting and, and workable for whatever we put in there at this time. Okay, well, there are no other speakers on the list. So we will move forward here. All those in favor? That passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Excellent. Okay, so next 
is number 423, Fair Funding Awareness, Report 18087 on page 50 of the board package. I'll read the recommendation in, and then I'm sure uh, Trustee Innes will want to speak to it. Okay, so be it resolved that the Halton District School Board approve the action plan outlined below to share the information for the Fair Funding for Students campaign. Uh, moved by Trustee Amos, seconded by Trustee Reynolds. Uh, and is there any, you, you can speak to it. Thank you. Um, this has been a journey and I would like to thank everyone who involved to um, get this um, infographic here. Um, Summer, I sent you the infographic. I was wondering if you could put it on the display. Um, I'd like to thank um, Trustee Reynolds, Trustee Oliver, uh, Trustee Gray, Trustee Pappen, Trustee Al Harrison, and Trustee Grabentz. Um, they were the key group that um, worked together as well. I'd like to thank for all their assistance, uh, Director Miller, Superintendent um, Veerman, and uh, Marnie Denton for their guidance in helping us massage this into something that hopefully will um, help inform the community. Um, this was brought to the board because we felt that um, people did not understand how school boards were funded. And when we started to explore it, we found it was a lot more difficult to explain than we initially thought. So that, that's why it took longer than we actually thought. And some of the things um, that we were trying to highlight were some of like the deficit that we have in special education, the fact that um, over the last four years, we've lost $2 million per year on our funding for spec ed. Um, and uh, some of the other areas were the fact that we're one of the only growing school boards in the region. And um, the problem is not that, that we are the lowest funded board, the problem is the funding formula and how it is done. Someone has to be the lowest, and we don't mind if we're the lowest, but it's the distance from midpoint to where we are that is the problem. And so what we're hoping that the community will have a look at this and will reach out to us and ask questions, and then that hopefully they will then advocate on our behalf to the Ministry of Education about trying to get the funding formula um, adjusted. So maybe it's a fairer um, way of funding for all school boards. Thank you. Are there any questions at all about this motion? Trustee Gray. Thank you, through the Chair. Um, I look forward to the uh, continuing work of this committee next fall as um, this document is shared around our communities, but also as we begin to engage with the government officials of the day uh, to seek some traction on some of the things that we already planted um, within our current government and some of the representatives that we met with. I think um, also that we have a plan um, and it's been, sh or at least an initial discussion, to begin to share this with our, our the mayors of our four regions to begin to engage them as being part of this discussion and part of the uh, promotion of the, the concept of, uh, I guess, a better understanding of and better action towards fairer funding. So I think we've got a, a great start. We've got lots more to do, but I think this document that's been created will be a, a, a tremendous assist as we take what is, as you've said, uh, Trustee Amos, a very complex issue as we try to simplify it and diagrammatically show through this document uh, exactly where the Halton District School Board stands uh, in relation to funding in this province. So thank you. Thank you for your leadership in directing this committee. And I look forward to uh, continuing my involvement with this committee in the fall. Trustee Amos. Thank you. Thank you, Summer, for getting it displayed for us. I just wanted to also mention that um, all trustees will be receiving the um, flyer by um, email so that they can share it with whomever they feel appropriate and that um, this document will be 
um, shown on the slider on the main page of the, uh, with a link to the Board of Trustee page, and the item will appear on the left side of the um, navigation board. As well, um, each trustee has received a number of hard copies so they can share it with their communities. And um, we're going to be issuing a media release um, probably early next week uh, about this document. Okay. Trustee Pappen. Thank you, through the chair to uh, Trustee Amos. I just wanted to thank you for all your initiative on this, this committee and all the work you've done on this committee. Um, and I think the key is uh, raising awareness. I know that um, for a lot of us, it was hard, hard for us to get our head around exactly what it was about and what we needed to do. Um, but I also wanted to share with you um, that I was at the um, provincial candidates debate at uh, Burlington Central High School. And there was a question about fair funding uh, put out to the candidates and only one of the three got the, the main idea of what it meant and, and what we had to do. So it just shows you it's, it's not really understood by a lot of people. So thank you for that. Vice Chair Al Harrison. Thank you. I'm really excited to share this work with the, our respective communities. Uh, and I'm also as interested, excited, and curious to hear what the feedback will be. So my question is just in that regard, and, and it just struck me now, or I would have raised it earlier, um, whether in terms of our action plan, one piece that we might consider is just creating a shared space where we can input the feedback that we hear so we can consider that as we kind of move forward to next steps. It could just be a Google Doc or something. I have no problem with that, and actually it's a great idea, so I'll create a document that we can capture any feedback that we receive. Okay, great, and uh, a friendly, just amendment that uh, uh, Gail, <laughs> Gail suggested. Uh, I'll read the, the motion again. It'll, it'll make sense why uh, this is suggested. Um, be it, resolved, oh, sorry. Be it resolved that the Halton District School Board approve the action plan outlined in report 18087 to share the information for the fair funding for students campaign. So if that's okay, okay, excellent. So uh, there's no more speakers on the list. I wanted to say though that uh, I am so happy that we've gotten to this point. I think the team worked really well together and was supported uh, technologically in other ways um, uh, by um, the board because we can't can't do it all. <laughs> we have um, sometimes we have to lean uh, a bit, but uh, certainly I am excited to get this out there. So um, on we vote. And that passes unanimously. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much. Okay, so next up is communications to the board. And um, unfortunately, we don't have our student trustees with us this evening, but... But Dasha sent me... Uh, uh, report. I don't speak as fast as her, so um, this uh, will take a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, she asked me specifically to read it out, so I, I promised I would. Okay. On Tuesday, May 20, skinned, we had our final student trustee meeting of the year. Although most of the meeting was dedicated to planning the youth Halton Youth Leadership Symposium, we had Associate Director Bogue come in and collect feedback from the student senators about their family's decision-making process and around choosing a high school. We hope this feedback will help inform the, inform the board's efforts to attract more students to the HDSB secondary schools. On Thursday, May 31st, the HDSB Student Senate ran the 17th annual Halton Youth Leadership Symposium at Sheridan College. We had over 200 grade seven and eight participants from 33 elementary schools in Halton with representation from all areas of the board, Milton, Oakville, Burlington, Halton Hills. <coughs> Excuse me. 
This conference was very successful. We had two inspiring and engaging keynote speakers, Director Miller and Burlington Mayor Rick Goldring. We heard great feedback from the participants about the workshops on mental health, equity and diversity, public speaking, world issues, and high school, all of which were organized and run by student senators. We delivered a presentation about student senate and student trustees. After the presentation, we asked how many people were interested in becoming student senators next year, and about three quarters of the room raised their hand. Our senators also organized a student voice session with the conference attendees where they led discussions about the major issues, questions, concerns, and ideas students have about their schools and their education. Overall, it was a fantastic day. Thank you so much to Trustee Oliver, Trustee Amos, and so Associate Director Bogue for coming down on Thursday to check out the workshops and talk, talk, sorry, talk to some students. We also want to thank Mr. Poitras. Is that how you say it? Jay Poitras. And uh, Ms. Annabelle, yeah. uh, our staff advisors and vice principals at E.J. James and Robert Bateman, respectively, for all their help this year. They were always willing to go above and beyond in helping us achieve our goals. For example, Ms. A reached out to all secondary administrators. She wrote that, Ms. A. I yeah, uh, reached out to all secondary administrators many, many times to help us get the word out about the student trustee election, which really helped us have a large number of candidates this year. Mr. Poitras was instrumental in planning the Halton Youth Leadership Symposium. He reached out to elementary administrators to register students, worked very closely with the events team at Sheridan, and helped us throughout the day on May 31st. Finally, we want to thank our student senators for doing an amazing job this year, both in terms of advocating for students at their schools and helping run another successful Halton Youth Learning Symposium. It was a pleasure working with Ms. A, Mr. Poitras, and all of the extraordinary young leaders in the Student Senate. We could, have, we could not have asked for a better team. Beyond the Halton Youth Leadership Symposium, we also attended our final Osta Echo Conference. The annual general meeting from May 24th to May 27th. It was an amazing conference. The highlights were definitely Mark Kilberger's keynote speech and the opportunity to begin transitioning our incoming student trustees and to pass on advice to incoming student trustees from other school boards. We were also able to share some of our initiatives like introducing the online student trustee election process and putting students on board committees which student trustees from uh, with student trustees from across the province many have reached out to us for more information in hopes of implementing similar projects of their own uh, in their own boards as well on may 22nd a number of our student senators were able to attend public student empower day a conference run by Asta Echo's Public School Board Council in partnership with WE, and we learned from our attendees that they had a great time and learned a lot about leadership from the event. We want to thank the board for continuing to support Asta ECHO and our ability to attend its professional development events and conferences. And Dasha states if there are any questions about our report, please feel free to send us, any e send us an email. So there you go. An excellent report. Joanna, did you want to speak on this? Yeah, thank you. Uh, through you, Chair. So I had the pleasure of attending the morning session, and uh, despite the fact that it was an early start, 7.30 a.m., uh, all the students were very happy and uh, keen to be there. Uh, there was a lot of excitement and buzz in the room. And um, our, I have to say our student trustees and the organizing uh, committee of students and adult staff uh, did a tremendous job with this uh, symposium. So I want to congratulate them and um, keep up the good work. Excellent. Trustee Amos? I just wanted to um, build on some of Trustee Oliver's comments that I went there later in the day and despite it being much later in the day, the enthusiasm and the um, activities in the classroom, it was, um, we have, we are going to be in good hands. These are all leaders and they are all going to be um, doing great things in our system and beyond. So um, exciting things to look forward to. and. Um, I'm looking forward to what our new student trustees do next year and build on their successes. 
Excellent. Thank you very much. So we're now moving on to our action items for June 20th. So we're up to number 521, Halton District School Board Network Filter, Superintendent Trufin, Report 18094 on page 51 of your board package. Welcome, Superintendent Trufin. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, trustees, you have a report in front of you um, that is recommending an expansion of our network filter uh, from grade six, K to six, um, and ex recommending the expansion uh, from K to 12. Uh, basically our entire network, both on our uh, Wi-Fi network and on our hardwire network. So it would include staff and students, any, any community member that would be using our Wi-Fi network as well. Um, I'm happy to take any questions that you may have this evening. Trustee Daniele. Thank you. Um, it's just a timing piece. Has this already been done? Has our, the previous filter been taken off and this new one in, the expansion of the filter? Or if not, when would we expect that to be done? Uh, the recommendation is to do that. And okay. I, I well, believe... It's, just, it's simply to rescind it. Uh, oh, to yes. To rescind the motion. So Correct. for me, the next piece is when do we put in place something to replace what we have? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, through the Chair, to Trustee Danielli. Um, right now, we, we are working with uh, a vendor on a firewall and, and a network filter. Um, we are layering, um, the, what we're doing is we are layering this K to six filter, so that's on our end. So we, can, we would remove that, and that can be removed in a very timely fashion. Okay, so it's removed. Is the new one in place? Is, um, one again? Yeah, yeah, yes. Is there going to be any time at which we have a gap in which we do not have a filter? Oh, no. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Trustee. No. Trustee Reynolds. Thank you. Um, through the chair, uh, uh, we had a special education advisory committee last night meeting, um, and we, we shared uh, this um, motion or this um, coming to the table today, and we had some, some feedback that we thought we'd share with you um, and ask some questions. Um, can the filters cope with the context and nuances of questions on health? Um, <laughs> would filters um, prevent or block teens in particular from accessing important online material about sexual identification, um, LGBTQ issues, sexually transmitted diseases, teen pregnancies, or anything else that would perhaps be um, uh, available for teens to, you know, look for their own personal uh, uh, awareness, or perhaps to even uh, augment uh, a research assignment that uh, they may be given, whether it's in science class or in health class. Uh, thank you uh, to the chair, to Trustee Reynolds. I, I can answer that actually quite briefly. Absolutely not. That's not what the filter does. Um, academic resources, research papers, uh, resources for young adults, uh, students, uh, staff um, to access research papers. That's not the intent of the filter. Staff would be able, and students would be able to access, uh, whether it be sexual orientation, gender identity, um, digital addiction, um, with, with no problem whatsoever. The filter, the filter uh, removes illicit, illicit content that is only appropriate for those 18 years and older. Follow up? Okay, thank you. Um, so we definitely have a responsibility to set limits and teach students um, good digital stewardship. Um, Will this uh, new um, method of filtering, will there be any amendment to our, uh, I want to say, safe internet usage education that we're currently delivering to all our students? Thank you, Chair, to Trustee Reynolds uh, again. Uh, that's what really what we're doing with digital citizenship. Um, all of our teachers, all of our students are, are focusing on that, on that lens, on um, the positive element of, of the internet and digital uh, technology, uh, respecting sites that are inappropriate, respecting passwords, respecting privacy of others. Um, that's the world we live in right now. And certainly our teachers are um, encouraging, educating our, our young people on digital citizenship, effective digital citizenship skills. Um, the filter, it, we already have the filter in, in, in place, um, but we are, it is on our end 
that we're running into some problems because we're doing some authentication and layering of identifying people on what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. Trustee Amos. Thank you. Um, Superintendent Trufin, when we first put the filter on, um, we had consultation with the community and we received much feedback from students about the concerns about filtering, especially for um, high school students and grade seven and eights, because sometimes one word can mean multiple things. And um, so now that we're going to be looking at filtering the whole network, are we going to be block, end up potentially blocking some of the things that students may need to access because of the multiple, multiple definitions of some words? And I mean, um, I just remember this was um, a lot of controversy at the time, and I just want to make sure that we're not going to revisit that. Uh, thank you for that question and, and to the Chair, Trustee Amos. Um, we absolutely have the ability to override the filter. And what I mean by that is if there is a site that perhaps is filtered and um, we deem it that it does not, it is not explicit pornographic material, we will unblock it. Um, and that would be done in a very timely fashion. Uh, we, have a, we have a process in place right now for that. Um, and, and we would continue that. I can tell you that the filter that we use is one of the best in the industry standard. And um, this, is, this is the world they live in, internet security and vulnerability. And our vendor is exceptional at categorizing appropriate explicit content. Thank you for those reassurances. Trustee Gray. Yes, thank you. This question may be for Director Miller, but um, uh, I'll uh, just try this out. I, I wonder if, um, are we in step with what is being used by other school boards? I, I would imagine at code there would be discussions about what other school boards are doing uh, with this, and uh, I'm just wondering if we are in step with, uh, I guess, the standards around the province. If I may answer that question, because uh, I did, did, I have been doing a little bit of research on this for the last few years. Um, so, to so the chair, the trust, trustee Gray, um, there's no board in the province that I'm aware of that is not filtering pornographic content on their entire network. Um, our surrounding boards, Toronto, Toronto Catholic, Upper Grand, Greater Essex, Peel, Blue Water, Lambton Kent, Simcoe, Waterloo, Trillium Lakeheads, Niagara, Hamilton, they all filter at minimum what we're doing. At minimum, I, and I, I would add, um, my colleagues and George's colleagues, our Superintendent Trufin's colleagues in the CIO position or whatever, were somewhat surprised that we were not doing the same. Trust. I'm um, sorry, Vice Chair Hal Harrison. Oh, oh sorry, Jean. I could just have a follow-up. Yep. Uh, I had a second part to this question. Um, have we had a legal opinion uh, regarding this move in that uh, I guess we want to, as a board of trustees, probably be fully assured that we are covered in all areas, removing liability and vulnerability uh, with regards to this. So do, have we had legal opinion? Through you, Chair Drevens, to Trustee Gray. No, we have not had a legal opinion, and I don't see a reason. I don't really see a reason to do it. I think we have a greater liability at the moment because we've actually this. Uh, some could argue we're providing a route to pornographic material um, for some students in our board. So this will diminish our liabilities, uh, and I. I mean, if the board directs me to get a legal opinion, I will do so, but I do not believe it's necessary. And considering that all boards in the province that we know of, we don't know, we haven't surveyed them all, but certainly all the GTA boards and uh, west of us are doing this at a very minimum, I would say we were in pretty good, um, on pretty good uh, steady ground. Vice Chair Al Harrison. Thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I was just wondering whether the cost of the expanded filter will be similar to the current one. Uh, and I have you. a follow-up. Thank you, uh, through the Chair, to Vice Chair Al Uh Yes, because we do have the filter in place right now through our vendor. Um, 
and again, I, as I said, we are the ones that are cutting a piece out. So it's in place right now. So there is no additional cost to the board budget to do this. That's great. Uh, and then secondly, how is the effectiveness monitored uh, given the changing technologies? It seems that um, sometimes the folks with nefarious purposes are one step ahead, and I just wonder what processes we or the vendor have in place to um, keep track of that. We are with one of the most reputable vendors for Internet security um, at this time. Uh, many boards across the province and organizations, corporations use this vendor. Um, what are our, how are we monitoring? Um, certainly that, that's done through the, the classroom level. Um, you know, if there's a situation that um, inappropriate content was accessed, that, that we rely, of course, on, on teachers in the schools and the vice principals and principals. From a board perspective, um, we, there's been some changes uh, in the last four years. Four years ago, we were not a fully implemented G Suite board. Um, four years ago, a lot of these sites weren't changing their IP address. And I'm not going to get too technical this evening, but they weren't changing their IP addresses because they know they're being filtered out. They don't want to be filtered out. Um, but so uh, not, they weren't secure HTTP sites four years ago either. Now they are. So I, I don't want to say they're, they're getting smart, but they're, they realize that they're being filtered out by organizations and certainly academic institutions. Um, and we rely, we rely on this vendor to make sure that um, what we're asking our vendor to do, they do it. Trustee Collard. Thank you for the information you've brought us this evening. Um, I'm hoping that uh, I can tag on to what uh, Trustee Daniele mentioned previous, that your recommendation is only to rescind a motion. You've not followed that up with a subsequent motion to replace um, what we're currently doing with the expanded filter. And I would like to see a motion similar to M140133 um, added on that would say that we are going to provide this for all students um, in our board and, and staff in our board um, and with the annual subscription not to exceed $100,000 per year uh, and uh, just make it a similar motion because if, we're, if all we're doing is rescinding, we're not telling the public that we've actually expanded. Director Miller. Through you, Chair Gravens, to Trustee Collard. Uh, this is a bit of a challenge. We believe that this is an operational issue and that the original motion was an operational motion. And so we felt that um, we bring this to rescind this and in the body of it say that we will um, do so, uh, that we will filter JK to 12. Um, I mean, I guess there could be a debate about whether this is operational or not. We believe it is. Um, but of course, trustees may have a different opinion, and that's that's perfectly okay. So the, that's the reason we didn't put another motion in there because we then believe um, that if trustees vote on a new motion, they're voting on an operational issue in that respect. Um, we're not wedded to it, you know. We're we're receptive to the debate that may go here, but that's that's the reason behind it. May I follow up, please? My concern here is that there are dollars attached, and so it's a budgetary item. It's also since there was originally a motion, and then we would be voting to rescind if there's no at least a policy statement. We need something um, in, in writing to affirm that this is the direction we're taking. Otherwise, we, we could just be saying we're not filtering anything because there's, there's nothing to replace the motion. Through you, Chair Gravens, to Trustee Collar. What we're proposing, there is no money attached. There was money attached on the original one. Uh, there's no additional money, let's put it that way. We do have money for filters, yeah. But the very last statement of the report says to this end, well, you know what it says. To this end, the board is expanding its filter for pornographic websites to the entire network. Um, I, we're open, no, though. We're, so. I might. I, I would just like to uh, say we do have um, policies and procedures regarding the safe use of technology, and this should be part of our policy and procedure 
and, and the safe use of technology documentation that we have. Through you, Chair Drabents, to Trustee Collard. Uh, as trustees are aware, we're, we're certainly doing, we're doing a policy review right now. We could pass this information on to our, the individual, the, the lawyer that's doing the policy review uh, to incorporate it in. I, that's not a, an issue for us. And uh, like I said, we're not we weren't wedded to it. We just were trying to figure out how to deal with this in this way, but we can certainly do that. The will of the board, though, is, is, is that what the board would like us to do? It's not really a vote, but I'm glad. Trustee Daniele. Thank you very much. I think what's at issue here is that this was a uh, trustee motion, and so to rescind the trustee motion will make the optics now look like the trustees have nothing to say about it, that we cared about having a filter, and going forward that we do not care about a filter, it's the optics of it. I think that's it. But could we simply amend the motion to be resolved that the Halton District School Board rescind motion M140133 effective immediately, given that a new and better system is being put in operationally? It's fine. That, uh, that, that through your chair, that, that, to Trustee Danielli. I, but yeah, we're Trustee we're totally we're we're totally fine with that. Um, is that the way it can work? It closes yeah. the circle yeah. for us as trustees. Sure. No, no problem. No problem. I, I mean, we were aware that it put trustees in an awkward position, but I, but, <laughs> but I thought you already were in an awkward position because the, the original motion was a kind of an operational motion to begin with, right? So. Um, but yeah, for sure, we can we can do that. I would like to make that amendment, please. Oh, it's coming next week. Okay, so it'll come back with the and we'll put amendment. The yeah. Amended. Okay, seeing no more questions, it will be back in two weeks. Thank you very much, Superintendent Truffin. Okay, next we have number five two two budget. Superintendent Veerman, report 18090 on page 52 of your board package. Welcome, Superintendent Veerman. Thank you uh, to the Board of Trustees. It is a pleasure this evening to present the 2018-2019 budget. It has been a culmination of a lot of work by a lot of individuals, and certainly I'd like to acknowledge uh, uh, the budget staff and controller uh, Jackie Sweetman and Allison Robertson. Uh, this evening, uh, we will highlight uh, some of the key components of the budget. There you go. Thank you. Firstly, uh, we want to certainly acknowledge that the 2018-2019 operating and capital budgets of the Halton District School Board have been developed with the vision that every student will explore and enhance their potential, passions and strengths to thrive as contributing global citizens. In terms of the budget development process itself, uh, the key objectives of the process are to ensure that we align our financial resources with our strategic plan, our multi-year operational plan, our special education plan, to ensure that we identify school-based staffing requirements, we gather input from our stakeholder groups, and that we ensure ministry compliance. With respect to enrollment, uh, again, in 2018-19, we are projecting a small increase over the 2017-18 original budget, or original enrollment projection, and we are projecting uh, just over 64,641 students, which is an increase from last year, the original projection of uh, 403 students, or 0.63%. We uh, have demonstrated uh, on a bar graph the change in enrollment from uh, uh, the last ten, for the last 10 years. And again, we are one of the few boards that continue to grow uh, in our enrollment. Although it is slowing a bit, we are still again uh, continuing to grow. 
In terms of our revenues, uh, based on um, the ministry allocation, ministry uh, grants for student needs, again, the majority of our funding is, is from the province through the GSN, just over 90%. And then we've highlighted some of the additional revenue sources. In terms of expenditures, and these are based on ministry expenditure categories, the majority of our expenditures of the 763 million projected expenditures, approximately 78.5 are with respect to instruction, with pupil accommodation, uh, it, the next largest component. Uh, I believe we have seen this graph earlier this evening. This represents uh, our, or the Halton District School Board average per pupil funding versus the provincial average. And again, ha as has been alluded to earlier this evening, uh, we continue to be below the provincial average and have been uh, in, in that situation for uh, at least 10 years. And uh, again, as was explained earlier, there is some uh, direction to, uh, uh, to, to provide uh, further direction or further information to the public on this. In terms of uh, the actual dollars itself, for 2018-19, we're approximately $1,300 below the provincial average. What we have done and included in uh, the agenda package with the budget book is that uh, we've highlighted some of the resources that are included in the operational budget to support the multi-year plan. And they are based, in, again, on um, our, um, our three key components of engagement and achievement, equity and well-being, and stewardship and resources. I'm not going to review each of these since they are included in both the actual report and the budget book, but just wanted to highlight that we continue, despite uh, a, a tight budget, continue to support uh, the multi-year plan. So again, under engagement and achievement, equity and well-being, stewardship and resources. And finally, uh, we just want to highlight that it is a balanced budget based on ministry definition, that it meets all of the ministry and board reporting and accountability requirements, and uh, the budget once approved will be filed by the minister to the Ministry of Education by the end of June. And at this time, I'd be pleased to answer any questions. We do have at least one. Uh, Trustee Daniele. Thank you very much. And I'm, I'm going to say, I know we're not starting on this until two weeks from now, but two weeks from now is an extremely heavy agenda. So I don't want to take the time to say it now. I do want to spend, I want to say it now. This is so much more than just a 52 page report. This is, I don't know how many PowerPoints you, you prepared for us. I lost track of how many meetings we had on the budget and how many questions were asked and the number of times you and your staff came out in the evenings to make sure that we were up to date and we understood this. So I know the public will often see that, sees that we get at one meeting, we approve it the next, and they don't see all the work that goes into it behind that, all the, the countless meetings. And I just wanted to say thank you so much. I feel very, very prepared for this budget, thanks to the time that you and uh, Jackie and Allison put into this. So thank you so much. Trustee Oliver. Thank you, through you, Chair, and I too would like to echo uh, sentiments expressed by um, Trustee uh, Daniele. I do have a couple of questions. Uh, one pertains to Appendix A2. There is a um, um, projected uh, decrease in the ECEs, the Early Childhood Educators, so I wonder if you can elaborate on that, and then I have a question after that one. Would it be possible to get the lights back on? Thank you very much. I'm just wondering what that decrease might be due to, how it can be explained. Um, through the chair, to Trustee Oliver, um, we had the same number of um, um, educate early childhood educators. Um, so it is not the change in the FTE, but I believe it's a reduction in the actual supply time. 
So we did see that uh, maybe we uh, were, the budget that we set for the supply was a little bit high. So we're reducing the supply budget. Thank you. And then my, my next question pertains to, um, I believe it's section one of the draft budget, the key highlights, page um, 30. It's detail of instruction staff development expense. In the table, there is a projected decrease for uh, research, safe schools, safety and well-being, and student success. And I wonder if uh, you can elaborate on that. It's page, it's page 30. I've got it, but uh, through you, Chair Gravens, to Trustee Oliver, uh, one of the reductions you've mentioned was safe schools and safety and well-being. Um, can we take that, because you've asked about the, why those reductions, uh, we can take that back to Superintendent Padre Barrick's not here this evening, and that's his portfolio, but I think maybe it will answer the other ones. And we can take it back and bring that answer. Yeah, that's fine. I'm happy to uh, receive the answer at our next meeting. Okay. Thank you. So, so can you... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Superintendent Blackwell can take the research one, and uh, Julie, can you take student success? Yeah. So through the chair uh, to Trustee Oliver, uh, within the research department, if you're aware, we currently have three uh, full-time teachers that are in our research department. Um, one of the teachers is, uh, that's in the role is in an acting position. As that role comes to an end this year, we are uh, going to be posting uh, for an external uh, researcher that is not an educator. Um, and that is a reduction in cost of, uh, for the salary for that position. Sorry, through, the, through the chair to Trustee Oliver, so that page reflects some of the cuts that were had to be made this year in order to reach a balanced budget. And so within the student success portion of that, um, which falls under secondary program, these were some of the cuts as well. Um, and so we have looked at things where, um, such as our, um, our safety budget, knowing that we, if we need to, because it's not necessarily that something's going to break, um, that we would be able to come back to that, but we've had to look to where we could, in order to be balanced, come into. So rather than our contingency fundings for supports for programs within tech ed and those types of things, we've, we're going with the optimistic look that everything will be fine and that we will be able to use that money elsewhere and not have to worry about the repairing piece at this point. Thank you, and I appreciate that. I mean, relative to the uh, to the budget, the cuts are are small, relatively small. Um, just maybe student success looks a little bit um, steeper, so I was just concerned about that. And certainly, I can bring you back a detailed report for the next meeting. Thank you, I appreciate that. Trustee Amos. Thank you. I'd just like to thank you for all your hard work uh, making this a balanced budget, especially in difficult times. And um, I know as we're, as the board grows and with the way the funding is, which we referred to earlier, it um, is becoming more and more challenging to have the balanced budget. But I'd like to thank you, Superintendent Veerman, and I'd like to thank um, Controller Sweetman and Allison for all your hard work and for everyone who's involved with this. And I know it's all the senior admin as well because some difficult choices had to be made to see where things could be um, brought more into line or where things may not be um, 
able to do this next year. And I know we all wanna do everything, but sometimes we have to make choices. So I'd like to thank you for all the hard work that went into this. And um, I'm so happy that you were able to create the balanced budget because I know at first maybe you thought you might not be able to. And I've seen some other boards have actually passed some deficit budgets and I'm glad we're not in that situation. So thank you for that. Vice Chair L. Harrison. Thank you very much. Uh, and like my colleagues before me, thanks for all of the work that's gone into uh, preparing this. This is a three quarters of a billion dollar budget, which is a really big number. Um, and so coming to a balanced uh, point is, is something. Um, I wanted to ask specifically about the uh, reduction of 750,000, which represents roughly 1% of our uh, budget um, and just get a handle on that piece and the impacts that it will have because my understanding is that that's a external process that has been imposed by the Ministry of Education this year um, and a 1% uh, reduction in that regard when our budget's already pretty tight is a little bit um, hard to handle, thanks. Thank you, uh, through the chair, to the vice chair, I believe you're referring to the reduction in investment income. So as part of the announcement, the GSN announcement that came out in the middle of April, the end of April, the ministry uh, has put a process in place that impacts the timing of the cash flow of the grants. So it's not impacting the dollar amount itself, but it's impacting the, the timing of when we receive it. So based on, uh, on that change, uh, we will be receiving uh, amounts at a later point in time or reduced amounts at a later point in time, which reduces the amount of interest that we're able to uh, to earn in some of our in our bank accounts. And uh, for us, that equates to uh, just over $750,000, which again is significant. In terms of the impact uh, based on the ministry um, uh, uh, compliance uh, requirements. We, uh, when we look at our expenditures and revenue, any investment income is offset or is a charge allocated against our board administration governance envelope. So in prior years, we as a board have been in a position where our expenditures are below the, the revenue for board admin and governance. This is certainly going to, uh, uh, to make that uh, uh, quite a bit uh, more difficult to achieve in terms of ministry compliance. And as we go uh, in future years, again, it's going to be a pressure in that line. Again, we have been able uh, over the past years to ensure we are compliant by having expenditures less than revenue. But this is, uh, again, as a result of the change in, uh, in ministry um, direction with respect to cash flow for, for grants, receive grants. Just follow up. So I just wonder whether um, feedback has been provided to the ministry in that regard in terms of impact. I'm sure that they perhaps understood. Um, to the chair, uh, to the vice chair. Uh, certainly uh, all of the superintendents when this information was uh, was received did provide uh, significant feedback to the ministry uh, because it is impacting all boards in the province and we believe that there were different options that could have been put into place that would have achieved what the ministry was hoping to achieve but it with different in a different manner that would minimize the impact to boards and we continue to uh, you know to, to lobby as a group of superintendents to uh, to look at have the ministry review this because again it is a significant change from from uh, from for us and for other boards in the province you can make one final point sorry it's just on the same topic again and whether it would be helpful for the Board of Trustees to make any motion in that regard to support that lobbying. It sort of ties in a little bit to the fair funding work that's being done. Um, so we don't have to answer now necessarily, but just planting a bug for my colleagues, I guess, on what the appropriateness of, of that, because that's really bothersome to me. 
through the chair, um, certainly as part of the um, the input that the trustee associations, OPSBA, uh, provide to the ministry on an annual basis. They do uh, um, comment on the funding and the changes in funding from year to year. So that would be certainly another avenue that could be used through, again, the trustee associations to ensure that the ministry is aware of the impact it's having on boards and um, and again, that uh, would uh, certainly be another avenue for trustees. Trustee Pappin. Uh, thank you. Through the chair to Superintendent Berman and her team, thank you very much for all your hard work and uh, especially balancing the budget. My question is around uh, transportation. Um, on page 32, there's um, the first one is the uh, home to school, which includes French immersion. And I'm just curious uh, about whether the increase has to do with not having the entry French immersion year this year with the grade two entry starting in September. Through the chair, um, French immersion typically is included under home to school because of the difficulty of um, identifying what the specific costs would be if those students did not go to to the specific French immersion school. The reason for the increase uh, from the prior year is mainly as a result of the renegotiation of uh, uh, quite a few of our contracts with our carriers okay. because of the change in, uh, or a number of things, change in the minimum wage and also the difficulty that uh, boards have had recruiting. Uh, there certainly was an emphasis by our carriers to look at what um, they were paying the drivers and looking at a benefit package. So um, approximately, um, I think three quarters of our routes were retendered this year. Mm -hmm. And that uh, certainly accounts for uh, the majority of the difference from the prior year. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, and yeah, sure. Through you, Chair Devance, to Trustee Pappen, yeah, the increase is not due to increase the number of students other than a, perhaps a little bit through growth. It's the cost that Lucy said, it's also fuel costs and all those other things as well have gone. So. Okay. okay, thank you. Uh, and I have a, another transportation question around the Hopes transportation. I noticed it's gone but down by a third and I'm just curious why such a large decrease in that amount. Through you, Chair Drabentz, to uh, Trustee Pappen. It's probably, we can confirm that with uh, Superintendent Padre Barrick, it's probably due to fewer kids having to access the system because some of those students in our HOPES program take taxis. Um, not We don't have buses go there. And uh, we only have two or three sites, of uh, three sites, I think, right? Two, two sites of, for HOPES programs. Um, so it's likely due to... Um, fewer students going into the programs. But we, uh, Associate Director Bogue will get the accurate information for you for the next meeting. Thank you. Trustee Oliver. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. And um, again, thank you for a balanced bu budget. That always um, is excellent news. Um, I do also have a question about transportation. And this one may be um, likely uh, more difficult to answer. And if you don't have the answer now, I'm happy to wait to, to the next uh, meeting. Um, page 32, the transportation expense table nicely outlines transportation for different programs and accommodations. And when I look at the home to school, which includes French immersion, I feel like we're that much closer to being able to actually get at um, transportation specific to French immersion. Um, so um, I'm wondering if there is a, um, a way to be able to kind of extract the number of students that are transported or maybe what proportion of that cost they would comprise. Uh, through the chair, certainly I will speak with Karen Lacroix, the general manager of uh, transportation services, as we have been able to, uh, uh, you know, change in the software and change some of the parameters that are uh, included in the software to calculate differences or uh, um, distances. Uh, we uh, will speak to her to see if we're able to get a better. Uh, um, understanding of the impact of French immersion with respect to this line. I know in the past it has been problematic, but we'll certainly touch base with her to determine how we can get a better uh, understanding of the specific um, component of French immersion in this line. 
Director Miller. Through you, Chair Vance, to Trustee Oliver, just to add to Superintendent Bierman's comments, I have had those conversations with uh, uh, General Manager Lacroix around French immersion busing. It is, it is pretty complex to delineate how they go because the kids are all on the same buses. English students because there's different drop-offs and so on. So um, um, it's, it, I know there's some new technology that may aid in that, but it is difficult to do. Um, I would say this, though, in terms of French immersion uptake, it's about, uh, it's at least uh, six to seven percent less than what it has been in previous years. So the full effect which may take buses off the road in uh, September that we're not aware of yet. The full effect of the program viability committee or the, the motion approved by this board of trustees around starting French in grade two, I don't think we will be able to figure that out for at least a year or two because there's gonna be a lot of toing and froing for the, the, in the short term for sure, so. Seeing no more speakers, thank you very much for all your work on this, and uh, we will see you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Okay, next up is number 523, Education Development Charge Bylaw. Executive Manager Renzella, Superintendent Veerman, Report 1. 8095 on page 104 of your board package. Welcome. Thank you. Um, the report uh, before you this evening is uh, more or less uh, capsulizing uh, the uh, presentation that our consultants did uh, on May 16th, uh, identifies uh, the rate charges, the bylaw, uh, that is going to be coming forward at the June 20th uh, board meeting for approval. As trustees are, are aware, uh, the intention was initially to have the bylaw adopted on May 16th, but we had not received Ministry of Education approval. Uh, we should uh, get that approval subsequent to the June 7th uh, provincial election. Uh, be glad to answer any uh, questions from trustees. So far seeing none. I guess we'll move on to the next one then. Thank you. Um, so. We have uh, before you this evening is uh, the LTAP. I'm not um, going to undertake a presentation. Nothing has changed substantially since the initial presentation uh, in uh, early May. Uh, what we have done for the be benefit of, of trustees is that we've supplied you with a brand new clean copy of the LTAP. There have been some minor changes, tweaks mainly relating to OTG that, uh, uh, new OTGs for some schools that was brought to our attention. And in fact, in the board report, uh, any changes that have been made have been bolded for the benefit of trustees. Uh, again, nothing substantial to, to that effect. Um, the only other item that I wanted to address was with respect to our uh, public uh, consultation and uh, uh, from uh, in terms of community feedback, uh, you know, we, we took uh, you know, a significant amount of uh, uh, effort in terms of advising the community of the LTAP and, and soliciting uh, feedback. Uh, again, this year we had 8,118 hits on the LTAP site as compared to 3,646 last year, so a substantial increase. Um, uh, so that that was one good thing. And then they kind of relate to how many additional comments, responses we received. We, we received about 20 more compared to last year. Uh, overall, the responses uh, basically felt that accommodation issues were not addressed in the document, 29% uh, were neutral and about 34% were satisfied uh, uh, that the LTAP addressed accommodation issues. 
and you know, I'm not going to go through the comments outlined in, in the Appendix A. Um, I think we are moving forward to, in terms of trying to address those comments. We're looking at building new schools, opening new schools. We've designated, uh, in terms of the, the new Milton High School, the Milton uh, Number 11 uh, school that will be coming out forward, as well as the uh, new Northeast Oakville Public School, Number 2 Public School. We are designating sites in, uh, in the Georgetown Vision Program. Uh, some of the comments, I think, uh, you know, maybe they were not informed of, uh, of some of the actions the board was going through in terms of closing the gap initiative, uh, as well as uh, the iSTEM program uh, process. And I think a lot of them, there are still some, how would you say, it, some issues and concerns related to the closure of our uh, of our two high schools and the impacts and, and uh, of programming and uh, accommodation in in in, in the schools. Uh, but generally speaking, you know, there's nothing really substantial that we can uh, say that uh, requires amendment or changes to the uh, to the LTAP. Uh, one thing that I do want to take uh, present and take forward is that you know we really want to ensure that we really try to communicate more effectively with the community uh, because there seems to be a lot of the same questions coming up year after year. So I'm I'm trying to wrap my mind on on how to better engage some of those those uh, parents uh, and, and community members about uh, responding to their queries. So we do have an FAQ. I don't know if they're uh, clicking onto it as part of the LTAP, but we're, we'll have to kind of think of a, a better way or uh, an improved way to uh, uh, address uh, some of their concerns and questions. Um, this report is going before the board on, again, June 20th. Um, glad to answer any, any other questions. Thank you. We have a couple of people on our speakers list. Trustee Oliver. Oh, thank you. Through you, Chair, to um, uh, Mr. Renzella. Um, thanks very much for the report. I'm looking at Appendix A, and actually my, I think you've started to answer some of my questions. Um, a lot of the comments seem like they will be recurring comments, and um, and I'm wondering if, if you have a plan for how to maybe um, have an evergreen document or something where you can track those comments um, and have an answer for them so that staff and trustees are able to quickly re refer and, and provide the community with the answers. And then maybe as you were referring to the FAQ um, portion of the site, have that there so parents can refer and, and get their answer from that. Um, yes, and in fact, what uh, the intention is that uh, once the board approves the LTAP, we will be sending a notice to the community that it has been approved and that we'll try to direct, we will direct them to the FAQ section with respect to some of their questions and comments. Trustee Amos. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank you, um, Mr. Ranzella, and all of your staff for, um, for the um, great report that was put together this year for the LTAP because um, every year, um, you provide more information, it's more readable and easier for us to understand as well as the community. And the information in there um, provides the community, uh, and I know you're saying that maybe there's not enough, but I do feel that every year you provide more. So um, I know you will take the feedback that you're receiving and you will be able to um, turn it around and provide more again in the future. But I'd like to thank you because it's such a complex document and I know sometimes the community feels that um, the numbers are not real, but we do know how much work goes into it and I know that there is a solid foundation and if they ever looked at what the stats were over the past and maybe that's something you could incorporate to show your differences, I think they would see that um, there is a lot of reliability in that report. I, did, I just wanted to also say that one of the things that I noticed as one of the comments under other was a request for a different based funding formula for schools. Mm -hmm. So again, here's not understanding how things are funded and the fact that schools are funded a different way. And um, I think it's just something that we as trustees need to be aware of so that when we're sharing how we're funded, things are, um, we can um, try to explain to the community that type of information. I just wanted to bring that point up. I didn't know if other trustees had seen it. But thank you again for all of your hard work on this and to your staff. 
Trustee Collard. Thank you, through you to um, Mr. Ranzella. Uh, could you please inform me uh, how much we expect, uh, how many students we expect to yield from a condominium? I, I don't have the, uh, it depends on the location. Uh, different municipalities may have uh, different yields. Typically condominiums, uh, and it, again, uh, they're high density. Uh, the types of units uh, that they have do not generate significant numbers of children. You know, if it's a bachelor studio, one bedroom, you're not, and maybe two bedroom uh, units, you're, you're not gonna get very many students. They're, it's really significantly low, and I, I, I can't tell you offhand what the number is, but it's like .018 students per, per unit, but I, I can get back to you on, on, on that. If you're looking for a specific community, or like Burlington, we, we do have, we have created, or we do have, projections or pupil yields by, uh, by, by municipality. But we typically don't get a lot. And um, I know that's a concern from the community that we're going to get a large number of students and we, our experience has been that we haven't. Unless some of these units start to change dramatically in terms of size and accommodation like three bedroom units and, and whatnot. But I, you know, it depends on market and whatnot. Thank you. Um, if I could get that information, I would appreciate it. Vice Chair Al Harrison. Thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Chair. My question is with respect to um, Southwest Oakville. And I note that in the comments, we received a number of them uh, exp expressing frustration around the aging facilities um, in South Oakville. Uh, and I think it speaks somewhat to uh, Trustee Amos's point around, you know, understanding of where the, those monies would come from and the processes that we would need to go through to either replace and or enhance those uh, facilities. Uh, okay, my question is with respect to Samuel Curtis Estates in particular, I see we have comments on both sides. Uh, A, would like to attend Oakville schools and B would like to attend Burlington schools. So I was wondering whether you could comment um, on whether there was more one way or the other. And I know it's all anecdotal. It's not a statistically relevant sample or anything. Uh, and then secondly, if you could comment on the process that we would need to go through to uh, redirect um, students. I'd, I'd have to get back to you on the numbers and on how many responded from uh, with respect to that. So I, I don't know offhand. Um, notwithstanding anything else, you can see that there is a divergence of opinion as to what what should happen in that community. As we, uh, as trustees are aware, uh, the board would uh, is required through its. Uh, school boundary uh, review uh, procedures to undertake a school boundary and, and the board trustees would have to approve a school boundary review process to be undertaken for this area, um, which in order to engage the community, uh, and that would involve, first of all, starting, setting up a boundary review steering committee made up of trustees and staff, and subsequently a, a boundary review committee that would consist of parents of the affected communities. You know, at this point in time, I, I can't say who, what schools would be involved, but you know, if Sam or Curtis is involved, we would of course include the schools that, where those students are currently attending, um, and then look at schools that may be accommodating those students moving forward. So through that process, I, you know, there would be a number of ideas shared, and, and then ultimately we would take options out to the community for public consultation to see what they are, and then ultimately we'd come back here for trustees for approval. So that process would not start until the trustees would approve the process starting sometime in September of this uh, coming school year, and with the intention of any decision be coming before the board in February of 2019. Seeing no more speakers, thank you very much for your extensive, complex, and key report. 
I just want to make note, and you'll see this in your package as well, that on June 20th, the agenda will also include the special education plan and operational plan as action items. So we can go back and review those before the next meeting. So the only information item uh, that is in our package uh, is actually the report that went with the presentation earlier today. So we're not going to discuss that again. Uh, next is number five, four, notices of motion. Are there any notices of motion? You have Vice Chair Al Harrison. Thank you, I just thought I'd mix things up a little bit. <laughs> and I just wanted to go back to the um, discussion around the reduction resulting from cash flow and perhaps put forward a motion that we correspond with the ministry and or OPSPA and or both to express um, the challenges that are presented due to that action. So. I'm gonna put that out there now and correspond with trustees in the interim in terms of the appropriateness of that. Okay, great. Uh, no one else is putting forth a uh, notice of motion. Next is the director's report. Director Miller. Thank you, Chair DeBents. Uh I am first going to turn to um, Superintendent Puccitelli, who has a, and I don't even think, Puccetti. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Sorry, Maya. Maya's going to have to change her name. <laughs> yeah, I can't see her name tag. I don't even think uh, Trustee Daniele knows this gr great news that uh, Superintendent Maya will say. <laughs> Through you, Madam Chair and Trustee Daniele, um, we received a letter um, just the other day uh, in the office that uh, Milton Heritage has decided to give an award to Martin Street School. Uh, they um, were taken with the design and the, um, the architectural value that was preserved through the design. And there will be um, a ceremony. They don't have a date yet. Um, and at this point, they're just letting us know that we are going to receive an award. I went to visit the school. It is a beautiful school. I would happily live in that library. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, uh, and I have to say why I say Puccitelli yes. is I have a friend, and he will be <laughs> he will be shocked that I'm mentioning his name here, whose name is Nick Pizzatelli, and so it's the Telly part that's getting me all confused. So um, anyway, I have some other qu quick news. I got I received this. Uh, it, it, I just received it a couple of weeks ago, although it was dated March 28th. It's uh, some results from the, our, ter our schools participating in Terry Fox. And um, the Terry Fox run has uh, raised over $6.9 million um, for 4,200 schools. Halton schools have done incredibly well. And I will share the full list with the trustees so you will see where your schools are on what they raised this year and what they've raised over the total. Uh, but we have 10 schools in our board who have raised over $100,000 for the, journey, for the uh, Terry Fox run over the years that it's been run. And I just want to highlight one particular we school. Abbey Lane Public School in Oakville has raised over the years $71,000. And I know my trustees may not know that, but it's a tiny little school in North Oakville. And that they've raised 71000 So I will share this entire list with the trustees so you can reach out and however you want to do that. Um, second, I have... Uh, uh, Halton Food for, Food for Thought Community Champion Awards. Uh, the Halton Families for Families Community Champion Award winners are from uh, Ann J. MacArthur Elementary School, uh, and it's a group nomination, so there's several people on the, on the list, and I think they deserve to have their names listed. Nia Brandt, Catherine MacArthur, Cheryl Hales, Christy Vander, uh, Vanderbeel, Amanda King, Shanika Wilson, Jordan Allen. 
also from Milton, Craig Kielberger Secondary School, Rajani Ryle Peters, Marcia Sims Luke, David Sprague, Angelica Henning, Ms. A.J. Abdul, Melissa Wagner, Daniel Innes, Mr. Woodley, Ms. Holmes, Cheryl Clark, Sheena McGuigan, Kevin Holcroft, Simon Vanellis, from Burlington, Lester B. Pearson High School, uh, uh, Lorraine Frederico, Corey Trod, who received an Inspire Award this evening, Mrs. Stickles, Mrs. Sharma, Madame Janice, Mr. Zinn, Mrs. Grigger, Mrs. Warnecke, Mr. Muhick, Mrs. Manzella, who's, uh, I know her, she's also received an Inspire Award, uh, Mr. Jaj, Madame Lindsay, uh, Ms. Marsh, and Mr. Clark. Um, so congratulations to those schools and our board. And finally, I have an OCTI Award, um, which is the Ontario Council for Technology Education Award. And this is a really prestigious award. And we have a teacher from Aldershot, Wade Richardson, um, a secondary teacher who has uh, demonstrated an outstanding commitment to the development, delivery, and promotion of technolo technological inf education. And in fact, I probably should have got uh, Trustee Reynolds to do this because both are from her area. The other winner is Chris Arnold from Burlington Central High School, who was named recipient of the Technological Education Leadership Award presented by the Ontario Council for Technology Education. And that is my report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, communications from the chair. So uh, I just want to mention that um, uh, I attended the Eddie's Film Festival on May 29th, and it was absolutely fabulous. I was blown away by the uh, films uh, and other, it's funny calling it film because none of it's actually on the actual film. <laughs> Uh, on the, all the digital uh, submissions, they had over 250, I believe, uh, and uh, and it really brings in um, partners to uh, to work to judge and to work with the kids. Uh, Kojiko uh, also um, supplies uh, some money for prizes, uh, so we'd like to to thank them uh, to as being part of a part of the whole thing. Uh, they really did it up nicely with red carpets and balloons and uh, Craig Kilberger Food School catered it and it was perfect. And then uh, also I attended and uh, Trustee Collard attended as well the EA dinner uh, on the 30th and that was uh, a lovely dinner. Um, uh, lots of interesting uh, conversations and uh, it's always nice um, seeing the awards that uh, uh, when people recognize within the community um, within our system and uh, also just a, a note that uh, various trustees including myself have been attending and organizing uh, provincial candidate meetings and debates and uh, they have been very interesting we've been trying to get out um, questions with regards to uh, the education funding and uh, all sorts of questions with regards to education in general. Uh, and uh, Trustee Daniele did an excellent job actually organizing a, a meeting herself in Milton. It was well attended and uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, unfortunately two candidates didn't attend um, that that's their loss it was a lovely evening um, and uh, it was a hit and miss with regards to whether candidates were uh, informed about our issues and whether the appropriate uh, education questions were even asked though we did send them out and submit them uh, at every occasion possible so uh, thank you very much to everybody that did attend and try to um, to bring our agenda forward and now we're up to committee reports actually can you put yourself back on again you're so fast John <laughs> uh, Trustee Daniele uh, I'm, I'm putting this in the committee reports because it is OPSPA related um, my thanks to the trustees who were able to attend OPSPA this weekend. I know it's a very busy time of year. Uh, the OPSPA AGM was held this weekend. A couple of things that were notable from that um, AGM. Um, pers my personal thanks both to uh, Director Miller, 
who uh, spoke briefly but eloquently on uh, our French immersion plants and the innovation that we're showing in innovation. And if you thought you sped through your presentation, Superintendent Newton was phenomenal in getting through her entire presentation on innovation. And I know I've been still, even today, I'm getting phone calls from trustees from around the province with questions regarding either Director Miller or Superintendent Newton's presentation. So thank you so much for taking the time to be in Niagara Falls to educate uh, my colleagues from around the province. It was very much appreciated. We did have our regional meeting on this Saturday, and I'm very, very pleased to say that at the regional meeting, our very own Jean Gray was elected to the Policy Development Work Team. And, yep. and Amy Collard was elected to serve as the alternate on both the Policy Development Work Team and the Education Work Team. So thank you both for putting your names forward in those elections and being elected to represent, um, for those who, who may not be aware, um, they are part of Central West, so they will actually be representing seven school boards within those roles. So thank you very much for that. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Gray. Thank you very much. Just as a, a, a continuance of that report, uh, uh, Trustee Daniele didn't uh, mention that she uh, is the, uh, for next year, the chair of Central West, uh, again, uh, continuing in her role as uh, uh, the chair as she has been for the last couple of years. So returning again to that role. So, thank you. Uh, I'd like to just uh, add a little bit of uh, the Inspire Award report. Uh, something was sent out to the trustees uh, within the last uh, 48 hours, I believe, but uh, we do look forward to acknowledging the recipients uh, at our next, uh, our next board meeting, uh, those being the recipients for the month of May. And I, I thank uh, uh, Gail Gortmaker and her office team for helping us to uh, do a quick step on this one and, and have this presentation at that time. And thank you to the trustees who were able to help with the evaluation and assessment of the nominations. Trustee Collard. Thank you. There's not much left on the OPSPA report for me to give. So um, I just wanted to mention that uh, Kathy Abraham is the new president of OPSPA. Michael Barrett is the new first uh, Vice President, and Carol Ann Sloat from Central West is the second Vice President. So we have represented, representation from um, North, East, and West, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice, and um, I'm sure that they'll work together as an effective team, and I was very pleased to see um, them putting their names forward. Um, the AGM was very well attended and the presentations were amazing. We had some really lively conversation and I will be providing a report to, to trustees, um, if not on June 20th, then in September. Vice Chair L. Harrison. Thank you. Uh, through you, Madam Chair, just briefly, Committee of the Whole meeting is coming up on June 13th. And on the agenda currently, we have a communications report regarding uh, marketing and branding strategy. Uh, Trustee Collard, I was gonna ask whether the parliamentarian report will be coming forward. And then lastly, we'll have some time to look at the governance evaluation piece. Uh, and this is a shout out to other trustees who are leading committees for any other agenda items. Uh, this will be our last committee meeting of the school year uh, as we're off on the 27th. Um, many may be attending uh, convocations that night. Go ahead and respond. Yeah, I spoke with Sheila McKinnon um, when I was at the OPSPA AGM and she is not ready with her um, report, so we won't have it for, um, we won't, I guess we won't get to it until September now, because this is our last Committee of the Whole, which is unfortunate because I really was hoping we would get it done before the summer, but uh, the timing being what it is, it will be in September. Trustee Reynolds. Uh, thank you. Um, I'd like to give the uh, Special Education Advisory Committee report uh, we had our last meeting of the year last night um, and uh, uh, was 
well attended. Uh, thank you to Chair Grabentz and uh, Trustee Gray for, for joining us. Um, the topics of discussion were we, uh, 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 Superintendent um, uh, Zonnefeld had uh, shared with us the grade four screening um, report uh, that looked at the uh, improvements to the process. Um, and uh, the spec ed um, committee heard that to their delight that there was no reduction in the spec ed budget. Uh, majority uh, approved the spec ed plan uh, with um, LDAH, uh, who uh, will be bringing a minority report to our board. There was a reminder that the spec, uh, special athletes track meet June 20th, Garth Webb Secondary School from uh, 9.30 to 2. Uh, and a shout out to the Optimist Club, who we learned uh, for the last number of years has been providing food uh, for all our track and field uh, students and staff um, uh, free of charge. And uh, so shout out to them. Uh, it's our the year of uh, 31st year, so it's a special event this year um, with an expansion of different events. Uh, the other uh, resounding success around the table was the review of the um, MMR outdoor learning space. Uh, the uh, uh, special education committee was really um, uh, gave lots of props to the to the to the um, looking at. Uh, the physical layout uh, of the outdoor uh, learning uh, facility. They were delighted to see it was accessible, integrated with the entire school, um, and uh, provided basically an outdoor space for everyone. It's everyone's space. Uh, and uh, if I've missed anything, if uh, Trustee Pappen or Collard wants to add in, I think I captured most of it. Um, I just want to, uh, since I was listening to the committee report, uh, committee last night, I also want to mention that um, the chair was uh, mentioned that he was uh, very happy with the integration committee um, meetings and uh, that um, he's hoping there will be another one in October. He he was um, he saw uh, a lot of value of having SEAC uh, sit on that committee. So I just wanted to make sure that was there. Oh. Through the chair, I just wanted to add, we had a very healthy discussion on the uh, filter um, that is coming in and going out. So, thank you. Okay, now we're on to trustee questions and comments. Trustee Amos. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to share a couple of uh, good news things, if I, my computer is being slow though. <laughs> um, the first is, um, Lund's Public School this year for a fundraiser did a, a cookbook. It's called Get a Taste of Munns, and every student contributed a, a recipe in here, and I'll tell you, some of them look really delicious. <laughs> And so um, I just thought it's a really cool idea because it um, highlights some of the, the um, different backgrounds of the different students with the different recipes and uh, what a great way to share some of the um, things that are happening or the, the background, your background um, in this kind of a book. So just wanted to let you know about that. The other item I wanted to let you know is about um, a debate, some debate students at White Oaks. Um, the junior debate team won the junior national debate championship in Calgary in May. Um, winning team was Heather Lai, Grace Zhu, and the second White Oaks team of Catherine Posios and Amy Zhang made the semifinals, and Catherine Posios was the top speaker. So in the semifinals with a, team, with a field of 52 teams across Canada, there were only four teams left, and two of those were from White Oaks. So um, that's the, one of some of the best results they've ever received. And the seniors also did really well in the senior nationals in St. John's two weeks er earlier. Han Lee and Megan Kahn made the quarterfinals in English and Catherine Posios and Abby Robitelli were runners up in the French final. And Catherine is in grade nine and Abby is in grade 10, so they still got um, 
some debating left in them. And Abby was seventh in the national French individuals um, standing. So I just think um, some that's, uh, I wanted to share these exciting results because uh, again, um, our board is being represented nationally. That's great news. Uh, Trustee Pappin. Thank you, through the, through the chair. I just wanted to share um, about, tell you about the great event that took place at Lester B. Pearson last weekend. The event was a two-day event running from June 1st to June 2nd. Um, it was an awesome event for anybody who was there. The weather cooperated. Around 1.30 on Friday, we had a little bit of lightning, but that passed quickly. And then around 3.30, just before the crowd started to arrive, we had a little bit of rain, but that wasn't too bad either. So around 4 o'clock, the crowd started arriving, and they played sports. There were um, five different sports set up, basketball in the gymnasium, soccer, rugby, field hockey. I think that's it, yeah, all over the fields. Um, there were three food tr trucks set up. Uh, which served food through most of the night and a DJ that played through most of the afternoon and into the night. Uh, we had a pep rally by the Burlington Teen Tour Band and they played O Canada, which was really a rallying cry for everybody. It sounded great and they performed excellent. And uh, as the sports games continued, um, people were mingling, people were meeting up with people they hadn't seen in years. It was a wonderful experience. And then at the end, around nine o'clock, we had the uh, closing ceremonies and the awards were given out. Um, I wanted to thank um, Mr. Kevin Raposo, but I noticed he's just left uh, for all his hard work on both of the days. He did mention to Superintendent Pennyfather that it was one of the best Halton District School Board events he had ever been to. So that was a very nice compliment for us. And then around 9.15, the fireworks started and um, a lot of people um, either stayed around or went home and came back for the fireworks. And I noticed all the houses around the field were also watching the fireworks, like they were sitting up by their fence and the lights were on. So it was really nice. And then on Saturday, we had an open house from two to four, which included tours of the school uh, and the library. And um, there were all decades set up all around different areas in the school. And I was in that area when you first come into the school where they have the benches and the lockers. And I met a woman, her name is uh, Ruby Samra, and she was um, in the first graduating class and her nephew is gonna graduate this year. So I said, well, you've gotta come because you're like the Alpha and the Omega. Um, and the closing ceremonies started at uh, five o'clock and we had um, a, a Pearson graduate, Sarah Harmer singing O Canada. Uh, we had another Alpha and Omega. We had the first and the last principals giving speeches, uh, David Katz and Principal David Katz and Principal Lorraine Federico, and speeches by um, former staff, former students, current staff, current students, all great, all describing their experiences at Pearson. And we had um, two songs sung by the choir, which included our own chair, Gerbentz, um, and the songs were so appropriate. I remember the title of the second one, which was um, Gone, 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 and the first one was Morning Glow. And it was amazing. And as the evening ended, there was a, a memorabilia relay, which took three artifacts, and they were walked from Pearson all the way over to M.M. Robinson. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was really amazing. So I thank the committee, um, Superintendent Blackwell, Principal Federico, and uh, Chair, uh, um, sorry, Chair Cabanz for all your hard work. Thank you. I'm just going to add a couple of names on that. Um, so uh, Janet March, who is a uh, phys ed teacher over at Pearson, organized Friday night. Her, she headed that committee, and uh, that committee was passionate about about that. And then Nigel Scott uh, organized the um, the uh, actual closing ceremony, and um, 
Robin Baxter yeah. uh, um, handled the catering and the reception afterwards, and of course, the rain for Durko just she carried she carried the whole thing. So I understand that when they had the mascots meeting on Upper Middle Road, and there was all sorts of honking and all sorts of stuff going on, it was really, you know, the the event was very, um, very positive. It was, you know, there were moments that that were a little, that, that were just, you know, it caught your breath a bit. But uh, overall, it was a, a fabulous, respectful, lovely event. Oh, and yes, Patricia Pearson also spoke at the event. Yes, very, very well done. Um, very, uh, very appropriate. Actually, she shared a story about her high school graduation, I think it was, where she said that her grandfather was the speaker for her high school graduation. Was it her father? Oh, okay. I thought it was Lester B. Anyway, he spoke for 45 minutes on, you know, some government issue. And she was just mortified because, you know. <laughs> I would just add, uh, now her father was Jeffrey Pearson. And uh, when I was vice principal of Pearson, I invited him to come to speak at Pearson. And he had been the Canadian ambassador to the former Soviet Union. And he spoke a lot about the Cold War. Uh, so not, not when he came to Pearson at that time. He was a very engaging speaker. But uh. OK, so we're going to keep going on the speakers list here. So we have Trustee Gray. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, nothing but great news up in the hills. Uh, three quick reports. The Halton Hills School Community Council meeting held their last meeting uh, two weeks ago. And the focus uh, of that meeting was engaging parents. And uh, all of the representatives from the 15 schools spoke about their activities and uh, the successes they met with this past year. And so that was a very positive event. Second uh, thing to report is uh, this past weekend, after returning from OPSPA on Sunday, I had the chance to attend the annual inspection of the Royal Canadian Air Cadets for the 197th Typhoon Squadron. And so this is a group that's in the community that involves a lot of the students, uh, both boys and girls, in the Acton community and beyond. And um, it's really a tribute to uh, these young men and women who participate in many of the different events as members members of the Royal Canadian Air Cadets. And I was very, very pleased to have that. I've, I've not had the chance to attend that before, and uh, it was very engaging and um, uh, actually quite emotional as I saw the uh, significance of participation in this particular group, what it meant to these young men and women. So um, that was a wonderful uh, thing to do. And finally, um, the last thing, I'm not sure if this has already been reported. I didn't see it in the minutes, but just a shout out to Georgetown District High School teacher Kyle Stewart who received the McEwen Family Teacher Recognition Award from UBC. This award uh, was given to him as he exemplifies uh, uh, the values and he, of the UBC, but also by investing his time and energy into ensuring his students succeed, not just academically, but personally. Coming with that award is about $13,000, and it's very interesting that UBC breaks it out with a couple of... Uh, $2,000 from Mr. Stewart's use towards his own professional development, but $5,000 to be used for school enrichment activities at Georgetown's District High School. Another 1000 to be given to the person who nominated uh, him, and a $5,000 entrance scholarship to a student at Georgetown who plans to attend UBC. So wonderful news all the way around. A great, uh, a great um, uh, teacher in our system, and I had the pleasure of meeting him uh, serendipitously. I went to the Terry Fox Relay for Life at Georgetown, and guess who's organizing the whole thing? There he is, Mr. Stewart. So a shout out to Kyle Stewart, and congratulations. Trustee Reynolds. I have a little bit of show and tell myself. Um, my favorite part of the evening. <laughs> um, so uh, our board had 80 schools who successfully received parent reaching out grants. Um, I believe the grant um, application for next year closed last year, and I'm, huh, or not last year, la yesterday actually. Um, so I'm I'm excited to see uh, how many of our schools. Um, uh, successfully receive grants for the following year. Um, 
the two ward communities that I re represent, Aldershot and uh, downtown Burlington, the, uh, the circle of schools collaborated with their programs. Um, the Aldershot community of schools, um, that would be Aldershot, Maplehurst, Glenview, Kings Road, um, share their program and did a speaker series uh, that they hosted at the school, uh, including the Unlearn um, uh, project. The Ward 2 schools of Burlington Central, uh, Central Public, Lakeshore and Thompson collaborated um, and uh, on an event in which they uh, had Olympian Adam Van Cooperden um, speak and a wellness expo. Um, we had a, I want to say a wrap up meeting with uh, both wards, school communities, and we shared and compared what we learned through our programs, what worked, what didn't, uh, and I'm, I'm sure that informed their applications for next year. Um, just would like to thank, uh, at that meeting, we, we hosted, we were delighted to host uh, Superintendent Blackwell, who shared updates on the Aldershot iSTEM opportunity. I know that uh, the school councils took that, this back to their schools um, and uh, uh, heard that uh, Superintendent Blackwell actually just had a visit to one of the schools to talk to the school council. Um, thank you also to uh, Superintendent Penningfather who uh, shared best practice opportunities for school councils, constitutions, bylaws and financials. Uh, lots of good resources were shared. And thank you to Superintendent Trufin for providing an update on our um, Halton app. That's it. Vice Chair L. Harrison. Thank you. Uh, just briefly, through you, Madam Chair, I wanted to congratulate the Morden Drumline, who we heard at the Student of Excellence ceremony. They've recently competed in the provincials along with or against uh, largely a secondary school uh, team. So you'll recall that they're an elementary school in southwest Oakville, and I think they're achieving another first in doing so. So I wanted to congratulate the music team, the musicians, and all of the families that supported them through their journey this year. Um, and then uh, over the next week or so, starting tonight, I think, most of the schools in Southwest Oakville and probably in your areas as well are having their fun fairs uh, and whatever else they call them. So I just wanted to thank the many, many volunteers that come together to put those events on to bring families to our schools. Um, those volunteers do anything from managing busy households to managing multinational corporations. Uh, and they're bringing huge uh, value to our system and upholding the values of, of the board. And I think doing us proud and um, helping to raise positive profile. So to one and all volunteers, thank you. Trustee Amos. I just wanted to mention about the Public Confidence Committee and trustees had um, provided all kinds of wonderful ideas to the committees and I'll let you know that those became a foundation of the last discussion um, and was categorized into different groups and were a starting point for um, uh, part of the discussion of what was also provided by the Student Senate and some feedback we'd had from other people. And the work will continue um, in the fall. But I just wanted to let you know that um, a lot of uh, good feedback was heard on some of the ideas that were shared to that document. Okay, great, and I think we're at the end of the speakers list there. So now we are, uh, I'm looking for um, a motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> Moved by Trustee Gray, seconded by? <laughs> Trustee Amos. Is there any discussion at all on adjourning? Seeing none. So all those in favor. That passes unanimously. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Awesome.